I was just gonna steal yours if that like came to it. In early 2010, I uploaded a series of instructional videos about making paper airplanes that are surfed on waves of air. It was a good first design, but the gliders were too complicated, took too long to make, and it was difficult to adjust them. Sometimes even I couldn't get them adjusted, as if they had an evil spirit or something. When my students get frustrated, they can be really direct in their feedback good incentive to make it better. So here's the second generation. It's called the EZR. Mind you, this is still a challenging project. You should make and fly the slower tumblewing first. Also, if possible, try to fly some thin foam gliders. They fly much more slowly than paper gliders, so you have plenty of time to react. That makes them easier to learn with, and you can fly in small, cluttered rooms. Then you still have to follow directions exactly until you get one flying. Experiment after. This project will not work in humid weather. The paper becomes too limp to hold its shape well, and it's usually impossible to fly outdoors. If leaves are moving at all, or if you feel any breeze on your face, it's too windy to fly. I have success sometimes in the morning or evening after sunset. Inside can be just as bad if air is coming from heating and cooling vents. After you've made a few gliders, you'll crank them out in five minutes but this first one will take an hour. It's very common to have to make a second glider before you get one flying right. You'll need an unused page from a telephone book. Telephone book paper weighs about half as much as printer paper, so it'll be the actual glider. You'll also need scissors, a ballpoint pen, straight edge, tape, and a twisty. This thing that wraps and twists to close bags you can also find them wrapped around cables of new electronic equipment. It's the easy-to-bend wire sandwiched inside that we're after. Thicker wires, even paper clips, are too stiff and hard to bend. Print out the EZR pattern from sciencetoymaker.org. Page turns mark good places to stop the video and do the step. Rough cut or bubble cut a pattern outside the solid lines. Cut out the notch at the back. Cut close at these corners. Tape the rough cut pattern in these four places onto a piece of phone book paper perfectly flat together. This is an exaggeration, but it does happen to a lesser extent. Any tape works. I'm using masking tape so it shows up. Fine cut this time on the outside solid lines, but with two exceptions. Cut the back straight, do not cut out the notch again. And instead of cutting the two corners on the outside line of the pattern, cut to a sharp point, so the two papers are still held together with tape. If you cut exactly outside the black lines, you'll be able to reuse the pattern, which will save you time when you make additional gliders. There are six dashed lines on the pattern. Use the straight edge and ballpoint pen to gently and precisely weaken the paper fibers, making it much easier to fold on the dashed lines. Do this on top of something softer than a table, like a phone book or magazine. Press with only writing pressure and don't draw more than twice on a line. Be careful not to draw past where dashed lines hit other dashed lines. If you save the pattern, you won't have to draw lines when making the next glider. Origami and paper airplane people talk about mountain folds and valley folds.
fold the front to a mountain fold. Pinch hard to establish the fold right up to the other dashed lines. Fold the long line in the back, flap up so as to make a valley fold. I use the straight edge and spread out my fingers to apply force evenly. Then fold all the way over and press hard to establish the fold, even though it won't end up folded this much. Gently curve the corners down before you mountain fold the middle lines. Again, pinch right up to where the dashed lines end, but no farther. Pinch the front again and do this so you know that the folds are strongly established all the way across and symmetrical. Make valley folds to bend up the end vertical stabilizers at the corners. Notice that the end of the wing can bend up like this or down like this. Later, when you fly, it must be up. When it's down, I say it's kinked and it makes the glider dive. But it's so easy to fix if you notice it. Keep this in mind. Most airplanes and gliders have tail sections to maintain flight stability. But you're making a so-called flying wing all wing. You'll have to employ some tricks to get stable flight. Most aerodynamic lift in wings is concentrated near the front, so if I try to fly an EZR flying wing without weight in the front, that lift just pitches it right over like a tumble wing. So we put weight in the front, and if you extend a lever out over the front edge, you can get away with using less weight. Twisty wires work great. Strip the paper or plastic from the wire in the twisty. Cut along the wire. Use your fingernails to scrape off what remains, at least at one end. You'll get a feel for how much wire weight to start with in the front, but the first time you might find this helpful. Cut out the pattern and use it to cut a square from the telephone book paper. Tape a half inch or 12 millimeter square of tape to the wire like this, not back like this. Then tape that to the corner of the phone book paper square like this. Put the corner exactly at an edge. If it tips off like this, it weighs too much. Snip off little pieces of wire until it barely stays or takes a long time to tip. If it stayed to begin with, it might not weigh enough. Add tiny bits of tape to the other end until it tips or looks like it's about to tip. This should get you conveniently close to the right weight. Now that it's adjusted, pull the wire out. Cut another half inch or 12 millimeter square of tape again and tape the diamond to the wire end again. Flip the glider papers over so the telephone paper is facing up. You have to tape the wire exactly to the fold, so it might be a good idea to mark where the fold is. It tapes on like this the tape corner exactly to the front edge. Fold the front again to get the crease into the tape. Bends in the paper give the glider strength. The gentle folds also give the wing some curve called camber, which forms the airfoil that's very efficient flying. But too much camber destabilizes the plane. Amazingly, flattening out in a book makes the folds just right. Be careful to push the stabilizers down or else they'll get crunched. Push the book down for five or 10 seconds. Pound it if you want to, you can't hurt it. The folds in the front of the wing are flattened enough to be just right. <laughs>